Hi everybody, this is Ashley with Black Sheep Goods, and I am here to talk to you about the new semi-circle shape loom. So every loom comes just like this, with four different sizes, and then a little center piece that you can paint on and create like a little macrame or a little fringe party going on here. I personally love my little sunglass holder that I made with my centerpiece. There are so many different possibilities you can do with this. So every piece or every loom set comes with a piece of sandpaper and this is to help sand down the connection points after you have popped them out. So what I like to do is whenever I'm about to start popping it out, I like to figure out which side of the loom I'm going to use. So the front side, um, is just a little bit darker colored and the back side is a little bit lighter colored so either side works so what I'm gonna do is place mine face down this helps that if, when any splintering might happen it will happen on the back side not the front side okay so now I have all four of my looms. One, two, three, and four. I'm gonna show you a couple of things I have made with them. You saw the sunglass holder. The largest piece, or sorry, the second largest piece, I made this fun little organic tapestry with fun fringe detail. The two smaller pieces, kind of wanted to go with a little double thing here and kind of hang them on my wall um, like this, just to make it a little bit different, something that you don't really see every day. And I'm currently working on a rainbow. The shape, especially the larger shape, is perfect for a rainbow, which is one of my favorite things to weave because it just makes me so happy. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how you warp one of these looms. So I'm just going to take the smallest piece here. And you take whatever size warp string that you would like. You can use thin warp, you can use um, yarn as your warp, just whichever will fit through the holes there. And if you have a needle that um, can fit through the holes, it's much easier to warp it with a needle. So first we're actually going to tie this on here. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna put it through our first hole. And we're going to tie it. I like to leave a good tail just to help with tucking it in in the end. So what I like to do is actually take this end piece here. I bent my needle. That's what happens when you use a plastic one, but it's okay. I'm gonna put it back through this hole so that it will now be on the back side. And I can pull that knot and more towards the back, there we go. So that now my warp string is free to come up and down. What I like to do is just, once I tie it on there, kind of do this little thing, one, two, three, and do this all the way across every set of warp holes. And you're probably gonna overshoot it, which is totally fine. It's whole lot better to cut too much warp than to cut too little warp and have to adjust it that way. Okay. So now I'm going to take my end and put it through my needle. I don't like to tie it on there just because it creates too big of a, of like a knot to put it through the holes. We're going to start up here 
I'm going to put it up and through and then behind and through its neighbor hole. Pull them all through. Now down and through neighbor hole. And pull all your excess. And keep going all the way across until you have reached your other end of the loom. Now, once you have finished warping all the way through, I like to go and um, go back through each warp string and kind of tighten it up a little bit. I'll show you how I do that after I untangle this little knot that I have created, which is something that happens from time to time whenever you are warping this way. All right. So what I like to do after I finish warping everything is kind of got to go through so I started down here and then I came up behind this way. So I'm gonna pull down on this one here to kind of pull out any sort of slack within the first one then take my the next one and kind of pull any slack from the previous warp and then pull the next one to just keep going this way to decrease any sort of slack that you might have to make your warp strings as thick or I mean, I'm sorry, as, as taut as possible. So this is how you warp the half circle, semicircle. You go all the way across, have fun, explore all different sorts of creativity and ideas and textures and techniques. And I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with.